My name is Carlos Del Rio, and I'm a professor of medicine and of global health and epidemiology at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. Today, I will be talking to you about monoclonal antibodies for HIV prevention. <clears throat> this is my conflict of interest. Uh, I'm, I was an investigator in one of the studies on, on the AMP study looking at, at monoclonal antibodies for HIV prevention. Over the last 30 years, there has been a really an unsuccessful effort to develop an effective HIV vaccine. But research has shown us that the HIV envelope protein, which is found on the surface of the virions, it's actually, there's a capacity to neutralize this protein, uh, to, to, to attack this protein through neutralizing our bodies. Uh, the problem is that the HIV envelope protein is genetically diverse. It's covered by a glycan shield, and it, express, it is it's expressed at a relatively low density. But uh, work by many people have led to the isolation and characterization of several different classes of HIV-specific broadly neutralizing antibodies, and we will call those BNABs. And these antibodies are defined by their ability to neutralize multiple genetic, the genetically distinct and distinct uh, strains of HIV. There are essentially five regions in the envelope. Uh, protein uh, that can be, that have been bound by neutralizing antibodies, uh, the CD4 binding site, the variable loop uh, or V2 uh, apex, the V3 glycan site, uh, the glycoprotein uh, GP41, uh, uh, GP120 interface, and what's called the membrane proximal external region or MPER. The antibodies targeting all these sites have been identified uh, each one of them has been uh, analyzed for its breadth, in other words, the number of viral strains that can neutralize, and also for its potency. We know what is the concentration required for neutralization. In this cartoon, you can see uh, where the different uh, uh, the BNABs uh, uh, attack. You can see here the V1, V2 glycan, uh, the, the V3 supersite, the membrane regional external, uh, the membrane proximal external region, the GP120, GP41 interface, and the C4 superside. And you can see here the different uh, uh, BNABs that have been developed uh, to those specific sites. And the ones that you see that have a circle are the ones that the HVTN, the HIV Vaccine Trials Network, and the HPTN, the HIV Prevention Trials Network, are, are working on, on in, in different studies to try to, uh, to, to see if they work or not for HIV treatment and HIV prevention. And the one we're going to be uh, talking the most about is VRC01. VRC01 is a antibody developed at the Vaccine Research Center of the NIH and is directed against this CD4 supersite. So because of the breadth and the potency of some of these uh, monoclonal antibodies, some of these BNABs, uh, it has been uh, thought that maybe the passive administration of these BNABs could be an option uh, for HIV prevention. This is not something new. We've used this for a respiratory syncytial virus in high-risk infants. And most recently, we all became familiar with the use of monoclonal antibodies uh, for the prevention and treatment of COVID-19. And the, uh, there's a recently published uh, uh, study called the Antibody Mediated Prevention Trial, or the AMP studies, that were conducted by the HVTN and the HPTN. And this, uh, this study, is, which I'll go into detail, demonstrated the feasibility of this approach, even though the results were not as encouraging as we would like them to be. So here's a, a graph depicting the HIV BNAP clinical trials in HIV uninfected individuals. And, you know, right now we're, we're right about here. And you can see, you know, different studies in different phases. The only phase, a 2B study is, is H, HVTN 703-704, HVTN 081-085 which is the AMP studies. But you can see here, there was a phase one study with the same monoclonal antibodies that gave us some important data as well. And the other studies that are happening and a couple of, uh, I don't know, another, at least another phase two study is planned uh, using another monoclonal antibody in, in the Caprisa uh, region. So the HIV uh, trials in, in monoclonal antibodies in HIV uninfected individuals are, are summarized in this, in this table. And in green is H HVTN 104, 
703, 704, which are done with the BRC01 antibody, a phase one, and then a phase two, two B studies. And this studies, the phase two B studies, uh, have had over 4,900 participants in, in phase 50 sites in 11 countries. So they've been uh, fairly wide studies. <clears throat> there are a couple of other studies with different monoclonal antibodies that are happening. Most of them uh, phase one studies, looking at different antibodies and see what happens. And looking more importantly, you'll see at combinations in two or three monoclonal antibodies uh, for, for this same purpose. So the AMP trials were, uh, were proof of concept studies, and this was using the, the BRC01 antibody. This is an antibody that was isolated from an individual with immunologically controlled HIV. It targets the envelope uh, CE4 uh, site, and uh, it can neutralize a large percentage of HIV reference strains in vitro and protects against infection in non-human primates. And several concentrations of this antibody delivered IV have been demonstrated to be safe and non-immunogenic in HIV uninfected individuals. And in the analysis of the phase one study, it was identified that this monoclonal antibody present in genital tissues at levels that can be protected uh, from HIV infection. So this was a phase 2B uh, clinical trial in which participants received either 10 milligrams per kilo or 30 milligrams per kilo of the VRC01 antibody, or they received a placebo, so there are three arms in the study. And this was administered uh, intravenously every, uh, every eight weeks for a total of 10 infusions. And they had two different study populations, the HPTN704, uh, HPTN085, enrolled uh, 2,699 men who have sex with men and transgender women in the Americas and in Europe. And the HVTN703, HPTN081, enrolled 1,924 heterosexual women in Sub-Saharan Africa. <clears throat> the uh, so as you can see, you know, large study, lots of people enrolled, uh, very good retention rate, not 95% retention rate. Most visits uh, were completed and the adherence to the infusion was really high, 99%. And you can see, you know, how many, uh, you can see in this map, the, the, the green, the places that did the, the, uh, the HPTN085 uh, uh, study. And you can see in, in, in yellow, those sites that did the, the women's study at the HVTN 703, HVTN 081. And you can see here the uh, the prevention uh, efficacy of the antibodies and how, you know, what the levels were, where, where are you getting over in, in the number of, of, in the IC50 against the virus. And you can see, you know, the virus, if the virus has an IC50 of greater than three, you lose that activity pretty quick, but if the IC50 is less than one, then you get that continuously. So the analysis of the AMP trials indicated that while uh, BRC01 did not provide overall efficacy against HIV acquisition, and I'll show you the, 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 the plots, the uh, pre-specified analysis indicated uh, that uh, there was a 75% prevention efficacy against strains that were susceptible to BRC01. I showed you we have an IC50 of less than one, then they were effective. And but the problem is that those viruses with high susceptibility were only 30% of the, of the circulating virus uh, in the trial. And, but the study sort of gave hope that the BNAVs are sufficiently potent against infecting virus and can prevent HIV. And such uh, subsequent antibodies may need to be broader and obviously more potent than brc one And you can see here the summary of the AMP studies. This is the HPTN 085 and this is the HPTN 081 uh, graphs. This is the men have sex with men and transgender women study. This is the, uh, the, the heterosexual women in Africa study. And you can see the graphs basically look uh, very similar. They're not major differences in the in the cumul cumulative incidence of HIV across the populations. But as I told you, if you look at the populations infected with sensitive virus, then the situation is very different. These BNAS were very safe and they were very well tolerated. And most participants had no adverse events. And the adverse events uh, rates were about the same in the placebo as were in the product group. Uh, and uh, and the and this is you know the HIV BNAVs are are really human antibodies directed against non-self uh, and they are they have different mechanisms of actions compared to to other BNAVs such as the ones used in oncology or anti-inflammatory uh, monoclonal antibodies. Now what's following uh, from the AMP study is what's called the the AMP uh, uh, sort of uh, ATI study. So here's uh, you know. 
treatment interruption studies in participants that were infected with uh, during the AMP study. Uh, this has generated a unique cohort of, with early initiation of antiretrovirals while still receiving BNAVs because if you got infected, you rapidly start antiretrovirals, but you still have levels of BNAVs in your in your blood. And the question there is, is does the presence of, of VRCO1 at the time of HIV acquisition alter the innate or the cellular immune response? And this, uh, this looks, you know, the, the nice thing is that we have participants both with placebo and VRCO1 recipients, and we will be looking at this data uh, going forward. So in conclusion, the, the results from the VRCO1 from the AMP trials um, show that this could potentially be a useful strategy for HIV prevention. Obviously, uh, you know, we're not going to be infusing monoclonal antibodies globally for HIV prevention, but this is very important because it gives insight into what we need to look at when we develop a vaccine. There's been very good advances in BNAP screening and engineering that have drastically increased their potency and, and breadth. And also engineering with these antibodies has, uh, has generated variants that have very uh, high, uh, very increased half-lives. And that gives the opportunity of administering them every three or six months and even not IV, but subcutaneously. So, so maybe you can use them that way, right? And IV infusion every six months may be one possibility of subcutaneous infusion. But in any event, uh, what they really do is this, this provides incredible insight in the kind of uh, neutralizing antibody titers needed for protection. And this will be undoubtedly import, important in the development of, of the next generation of HIV vaccines. So monoclonal antibodies are also being used now for HIV treatment. There's studies looking at, at CROI. There was a study presented of, of two monoclonal antibodies and lenacapavir for HIV uh, treatment. So the, the, the field of monoclonal antibodies has significant uh, opportunity for, for growth and development, both in HIV treatment and in HIV prevention. And with this, I will end and I'll be happy to answer any questions.